Hello guys, this will be another untypically longer video on this channel, practical deeper dive step by step into topic of testing for those who haven't started testing yet. So this is a project called mini CRM, which I've created in another longer video on this channel. This one, CRM for beginners. If you haven't seen that one, I will link that in the description below. But the problem with that project is that it doesn't have any automated tests. And we're going to fix this in this video. So I will write in almost live coding mode the tests for this small CRUD based project. One of the end results of this video will be running PHP Artisan test and seeing these tests passed. And the repository for this project will be linked in the description below. So let's go. Our first task, first milestone would be to create a test for users CRUD. But before we do that, we can take a look at the default tests that come with Laravel Breeze starter kit. Here's one example. And on the left hand side in the sidebar, you can see tests feature auth folder with a lot of tests, testing that login works, registration works and all the auth features. So we can use that to understand the mechanism of how the tests work at all for those of you who haven't seen. So I will run PHP artisan test and see the result. But before a very important part is to configure where those tests would be executed on on which database because every test has some kind of arrangement It's called arrange act and assert three usual phases of tests. So you arrange the scenario, then you do some action and then assert that something happened correctly. So during that arrangement phase, database operations may occur. For example, create a temporary user and then test on that user. So where that user should get stored in which database and even before those operations in the main file of Pest PHP. If you're using Pest or in your PHP unit, it may be test case. We have some classes and traits executed automatically. So refresh database on test feature folder means that it would remigrate your database, which is good for testing because each test should be individually created as a scenario. But as a side consequence, you cannot run the tests on your main database because it would get wiped out. And this is where we come to this file PHP unit XML that comes with default Laravel and by default, these two lines are commented out. So this is how the default PHP unit XML looks in the Laravel 11 skeleton. So what we need is to enable those two lines, which I've done behind the scenes, and then we can run PHP artisan test. The test would get executed 25 past tests with 62 assertions with very readable method names, what actually gets tested. For example, test login screen can be rendered. So let's try to break that test. So you would see what happens if I break that. So for example, if I make a typo or change something and try to get this URL and then assert that the status is 200, which means successful. And now we rerun the test and it should fail. So we have failed case that we expected 200 status code on login URL, but received 404 not found because it is not found. So in this way, every time you run PHP artisan test, it would test all the scenarios you list in your test files. Let's put it back to normal. So this was just a demonstration of breeze test, but to focus on our custom test, I will deliberately delete all the breeze tests and we will start kind of from scratch like it would be any Laravel project. So I will delete the auth folder, all those tests. Also there's profile tests. They're all in the test feature. And this is how the default Laravel test suite looks like. There's one feature test and one unit test. And now if I run PHP artisan test, we have two pass tests, but they are just example tests that don't really test anything much. Expect true to be true and expect homepage to return to 100. And now we'll start creating our custom tests. So our next milestone is to create test file for user testing. So testing that user CRUD works. Our user CRUD is basically just a form to create a user, edit and delete. And we also have two roles, admin and simple user. So we need to test that simple users do not get access to that menu item at all. And this is exactly where we will start. So let's generate PHP artisan make test user test, which would by default be generated it as pass test because Laravel will detect that we're using pest. And now we have user test almost empty or almost the same as the example test in the feature, which leads me to another point. Let's delete the example test so they would not bother us while running PHP artisan test. So we would focus only on our own custom tests. So I will delete features example test 
and also unit example test. You may also delete the full folder of unit, but I will leave that as empty. Maybe we will create unit tests in the future. By the way, if you're wondering about feature versus unit difference, I have a separate course lesson. I will not stop on that in this video, but in testing for beginners, there's feature versus unit test, the difference, the lesson in the course on Laravel daily. Now we get back to our user test and our next task is to come up with scenarios to test. And this is actually the most important task while running and while writing tests. It's not about writing code of tests in past or PHP unit. It's about coming up with scenarios. So you need to put on kind of your movie script writer hat and come up with what to test. So for example, test that admin user can access users list page. You write that in just a human language. And then we'll fill that in with the details. Then we copy and paste a similar test that non-admin user cannot access users list page. And then we'll load the same URL for both slash users. But in this case, we assert status 403 for non-admin user. And how do we create that admin and non-admin user? In our user factory, in addition to the default user factory from Laravel, we added two more functions, assigning a role for user and admin. In this case, we're using Spotty permission package. So in the test, how we use that in the arrange phase is we create user factory create, but factory admin create. And of course, it's better to have use user on top here instead of internally here. So we have our admin here. And then we do this get using that admin user. In fact, we can do both in one sentence. This is what PEST allows us to do. So we have acting as admin, then we do get users, and then we do assert status 200. So this is the PEST syntax in favor of PHP unit. And then similarly, we're doing the same or similar thing below. We're just creating user factory user with the method that we defined here, user here, and then we have user. Variable names, by the way, is very important in testing because as I said, it's kind of like a movie scenario. So whoever comes to read here, read the test, they kind of serve like documentation sometimes. So the more descriptive the variables are, the more clear what that test is testing and what should be the correct behavior of your application. So we're doing that user and then basically copy pasting instead of this, we're copy pasting acting as user and assert 403. And this is by the way, powered that users URL is powered by middleware. So in the routes web, we have route resource with middleware can for permission. And that permission on the database level is resolved by Spotty Laravel permission package that we assign that CRUD route resource only for admins. Now let's try to run it. So we do PHP artisan test and fingers crossed. Yep, we have two passed tests. So great, first milestone, we have our test file with two first methods. Let's fill that in with more scenarios, more methods. What else we need to test about users CRUD. First, let's expand this method to also test that the users are in the list of table. So user can access users list page and see users. So in addition to assert status 200, we also assert that we see the text of admin name in the table. For example, admin name. In our case, it's user paginate by 10. And then in the index blade in the table, we see first name, last name, and email. So probably let's check for email instead of name. So admin email is it in the table. So this is the table, how it looks in the browser and the test will basically test the same thing, whether the user email is seen, which is true. Great. The next scenario is can admin create new users. And for that, I will copy this test method down below and have admin user can create users like this. And with this, you have a choice how to test, what to test, what to put inside of one method or to create separate methods. That's kind of a blank canvas and there's no kind of best practice here. So I will choose to put kind of two scenario in one. So whether add new user form is accessible to the admin user and also submitting the form works correctly. So again, we create the admin and get users create. 
we don't need assert C. And that's our first assertion, but not the last for this method. And now if we run artisan test, we have three methods, all passed for now. But then also let's try to fill in the form and see if it's correctly working. So copy and paste this one. Again, acting as admin, we don't do get, but we do post to users, which is the URL for the store method in the controller. And then assert status 200 is changed to assert redirect because what happens in our user controller is this. We create the user and redirect back. In here, we'll fill in the array of what data will be for that user. And we also will assert that that user is really in the database. So we get latest user from the database, user latest first. And then with best syntax, we expect latest user. And then instead of having to be instance of, we can chain the values, for example, first name admin or whatever, and then last name and email. And first, let's fill in the form with first name John, last name Doe, email, and password. And let's wrap that in array of separate variable of new user equals this. And then we pass that new user as array. And then we expect that first name to be, well, new user first name, like this. And then we chain that with same thing for last name to be new user last name. And we also will check the email. So we expect email to be new user email. So this is the best syntax for expectation for checking the values of one eloquent model field by field. So let's try to run it and see if it breaks. Yep, it does break, which means that creating the user probably failed for some reason. And this is where we need to investigate. I've done the investigation behind the scenes, so this will be a totally side tip, which I'll probably shoot a separate video on. Latest was suggested by my AI assistant of PHP Storm, local AI assistant, and I've used latest in the past, but I forgot that by default, latest orders by created at column. And at the time of writing tests, the admin user and this user is created roughly within the same second. So the ordering then fails. We're getting not the latest user, but the admin user themselves. So we need to specify that the latest should be by ID. And now for run PHP artisan test, it should succeed. Great. So yeah, part of work of writing test is to well write tests in the correct way with the correct syntax. So the expectations would work correctly. And then similarly, we do for non admins test that we cannot access those features. Non admin user cannot create users like this. So we have user and we're trying to do post users with empty array, for example, and we assert 403. And also this one should get 403 as well. Acting as user, users create should be 403. We rerun again, it is successful. Great. So we've covered the creation form with tests. And then you have another choice, how deep you test. What cases do you test? For example, you could test the failed scenario, so-called unhappy path. So there's happy path that if we provide the correct data and we're logged in with the correct user, then it all works. But it's equally important and perhaps even more important to test if our project handles the errors successfully in appropriate way, showing the errors, redirecting where we need to redirect and stuff like that. So let's try to simulate the scenario of unhappy path and I will copy and paste that method. And we will call that scenario users create validation errors. Just generally, you can name it differently. So same admin, we skip this one. And for example, we skip the email, we can even add a comment, no email provided. And then we assert redirect but also we assert that the latest user is not the same as our John Doe. So first name not to be, not to be, and not to be. You can assert it in another way like assert database has, and there are other methods available. But let's try this one, PHP artisan test. And of course, we don't even have that email, obviously. Let's even not test for that. Again, PHP artisan test, and now we have the successful test for the failing scenario. Great. So my advice would be do not forget that unhappy path of testing if something goes wrong and your validation and your error processing is 
correct. So in the same fashion, we need to test the updating of the user and deleting of the user. And for this, I will just copy and paste from my notes because it's the same logic. And I will just briefly comment on that. So I've pasted those tests from my notes, but before we run them, I actually want to rename that method. I don't like the formulation that test users create, always create validation errors. Let's rename it to test creating user fails with incorrect data or invalid data with invalid data like this and now the new test for admin can update users we can repeat almost the same thing but with two users created so we're acting as admin but we're updating another user with new data then we try to find that user in the database and we expect that this is updated the non-admin user cannot update users is just asserting the status 403 for both edit and update actions and then delete user roughly the same thing one more thing to comment is assert soft deleted on our user model we have soft deletes enabled so this is how you can assert that the record is deleted from the database but with soft deletes enabled and also we're checking the permissions for non-admin users running the tests again and now we have nine past tests with 22 assertions because each method may have one or more assertions as you can see and now we covered pretty much all the main scenarios of users crud by both admin and regular user as i mentioned you may go deeper and validate more and test more cases this depends on how much time you have and how crucial are those errors if they happen in your project the final change for this file i saw something to clean up so using route names is important if you use route names it's important to use them in all the project that's why post users should be changed to route users store with new user and then similarly route user store should be in this method as well for creating the users and here again route user store this users create should be changed to route user create route users create this should be route users index and also the first name the first test should be route users index let's rerun the tests to make sure we didn't break anything they're all still green and by the way if you're thinking that you need to run php artisan test every time not necessarily you can automate that both locally on your machine or on github actions as a part of your deployment process so for example you push to develop branch and then github actions would automatically run the tests and see if you didn't break anything and in the course of advanced level i have a free lesson so you don't need to have membership for that the lesson number one is automatically launch the test with github actions so i've posted a lot of screenshots how that could work and yeah in a similar fashion you create tests for other features of your application like for example make test client test testing the cruds around clients projects and tasks respectively i thought to include that in this video but then i realized it would be kind of repeating the same thing just for different database tables and different models so i will leave it for you kind of as a homework if you want to practice what we've just done so far so in this video i've written actual practical test for a real project but if you want to go deeper with more testing functions assertions and stuff like that i will repeat i have two courses on laravel daily so there's a course for beginners and advanced level and i will link both in the description below what do you think about this deeper dive video longer than usual on this channel what other topics should i cover with longer videos but still practical examples let me know in the comments below that's it for this time and see you guys in other videos